Uh, welcome to the University of Tokyo. My name is Richard Shefferson, and I will be talking with my colleague, Professor Woodward, to introduce you to the University of Tokyo and why you might be interested in studying here. In particular, we will be looking at a program known as PEAK, which provides opportunities for international students and those who do not have experience in studying the Japanese language to come and study as an undergraduate student at the University of Tokyo and get a bachelor's degree. Okay, so we're going to go on a whistle-stop tour of Tokyo. We're going to see uh, a few famous places, and we're going to see uh, two of the university's campuses and, and uh, what they've got nearby. Uh, so the university actually has five campuses uh, in, in Tokyo or around, uh, but two of them are going to be uh, the main ones that we're going to be interested in today, uh, because they're the campuses that are of interest to undergraduate students. Okay, so I'm hoping that you're going to be joining uh, us today from all over the world, and we're going to start uh, our tour right now uh, looking at South America. Let's go. So we're going to stop first um, with an overview of Japan, and you can see uh, by the marks in yellow where, where the Tokyo area is, and now we're going to head on uh, into Tokyo. And we're going to stop when we reach the kind of main, uh, main part of central Tokyo. You can see a number of places that we're going to go visit. So let's start off by heading right to the heart um, of, of Tokyo, the Imperial Palace, uh, where the emperor and his wife uh, live. Um, and this is a beautiful place to visit. And then let's, let's go to our next stop, uh, which is the old part of Tokyo, called Asakusa. You might go here and visit the canon and lots of very famous old uh, traditional shopping streets and you can enjoy all kinds of traditional cultural activities uh, in Asakusa. Let's move on next and, and head over to Akihabara. Now many of you may have heard of Akihabara because um, it's known as Electric Town uh, and it's the part of, uh, part of Tokyo where you can go shopping for kind of any kind of electronic gadget or a thing that you want, hundreds and hundreds of shops. Um, and it's also very famous for manga and anime. You'll find lots of cosplayers there and uh, uh, made cafes and so, such. So it's a really interesting place to visit uh, in Tokyo. If we head on a little further, you'll see that just a short walk, 10 or 15 minute walk from Akihabara, we end up at Hongo Campus. Now Hongo Campus um, is the University of Tokyo's headquarters uh, and uh, it's also the largest um, of the campuses. You can see it even has its own very large pond uh, called Sanshiro Pond you can see on the right there. Um, so we're going to continue our move. We're going to fly over to the um, southwest now um, and we're going to head to one of the really main uh, centers of Tokyo which I'm sure you've heard of which is Shinjuku. Now Shinjuku uh, Station is uh, the busiest station in the world. Uh, you can see to the to the left side all the skyscrapers of the uh, of Shinjuku, and Shinjuku is a kind of uh, a real hub for shopping for, for for business for for all sorts of things. Uh, on the right there, you can see the rather beautiful uh, Shinjuku Gyoen Park, where you can go and enjoy cherry blossom viewing, for example. Okay, let's let's keep on. Let's let's move south, uh, and on our way, we'll head past uh, the rather beautiful and huge uh, Yoyogi Park that you can see there, and then we'll end up at the second uh, University of Tokyo campus that I want to discuss today, and that's the Komaba campus. Uh, and the Komaba campus is the other sort of main campus, uh, and this campus uh, is where all University of Tokyo students undergraduate students begin their studies. So all of them come here uh, and later we'll be hearing about uh, the PEAK program and the PEAK program is, is centered at this campus. Uh, and this is the campus uh, where I am right now as I'm, as I'm recording this for you. Okay, so uh, we're gonna finish up our tour now right next to Komaba campus, just a short, a four minute train ride or about a, a 15 minute walk. Uh, you can find downtown Shibuya. So Shibuya is another kind of uh, hot spot of activities. And may, very famously, I'm sure you, many of you will have seen on social media and so forth, this is the famous Shibuya scramble, where lots and lots of people take selfies and you can see uh, you know, lots of people there all the time, every day. So a very short walk and uh, 
and uh, lovely to have Shibuya on the doorstep of the rather green Kumaba campus. Okay, so that's the end of our whistle stop tour for now. So the University of Tokyo has a, a, a long tradition within uh, Japan uh, as a dominant academic institution. It was founded in 1877 as the University of Tokyo. It has been through some name changes over the years, uh, particularly to the Imperial University uh, at one point. And in 1947, it uh, was renamed the University of Tokyo as, as again. Um, it currently has about 28,900 students and about 11,500 academic and administrative staff across 42 university organizations. And we have a, a fair number of international students now. Uh, we have 390 U Tokyo students who are currently studying abroad, as well as about 5,000 international students uh, on campus. And these students are working across 554 international exchange agreements. These are agreements with the universities around the world. The University of Tokyo is the top university in uh, Japan and certainly among the top uh, in Asia and the world. Uh, in the QS World University rankings uh, this year, it was listed in uh, 28th place along with Johns Hopkins. Unlike some of these other universities, though, with which it competes to be uh, at the top, the University of Tokyo is amazingly cheap. Uh, this is showing you uh, the um, tuition fee adjusted for uh, the cost of living and uh, the, the currency exchange rates uh, for one year, so $4,900 in 2021. The University of Tokyo is famous for its contributions to um, science, literature, and the academy in general. And this is showing you uh, some of our Nobel Prize winners. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, about 13 professors who have uh, earned the Nobel Prize. Uh, this doesn't list uh, former students who have won the Nobel Prize, and uh, there's uh, a good number of other uh, Nobel laureates that have that distinction as well. Uh, in terms of the academic reputation of the University of Tokyo, so this is taking into consideration its scientific uh, academic contributions. The University of Tokyo is in seventh place on the planet, uh, just behind the University of California at Berkeley. We always do very well in terms of these reputation rankings. Now, before I go ahead and talk about our program, Peak, uh, please let me share with you a short film made by Peak students reflecting their experience in Peak. I hope you enjoy the video. Welcome to a brand new world, a world where diversity is a constant and discovery becomes routine where norms are challenged and each success is but a soldier. Welcome to the world of a peak student at the University of Tokyo. All classes are conducted at the Komaba campus. Peak is a liberal arts program. Students can pursue disciplines of their interest beyond the traditional scope of the major. Through debates, presentations and class discussions, Peak students get the prized opportunity of exploring pertinent issues, transcending geographical boundaries and cultures. One of the most exciting aspects of lessons in Peak is observing the phenomenal array of perspectives from the students, each of them interpreting a single concept in different ways based on their background. There is no better place to get a glimpse of the world. Peak students will be involved in extracurricular activities. Clubs and circles are an integral part of Japanese university life as students take a breather from their academic commitments and dive into a world of fun, friendships and the freedom to explore. Flash mobs, band performances and dances are just a few instances of the exciting prospects of being a peak student. For a fulfilling university experience with a one-of-its-kind amalgamation of perspectives, cultures and an enriching academic environment, pick up your pen and sign away four years of your life to a promising adventure here with us in Peak at the best university in Japan. I made Komaba a fun place. Okay, so PEAK is an acronym, it's short for Programs in English at Komaba, and uh, it offers students from around the world the opportunity to study at the University of Tokyo in English uh, and get a bachelor's degree. 
It was launched in 2012, and it consists of two undergraduate courses. Uh, you can think of these sort of like majors, and they're taught entirely in English. Uh, the first of these programs is the International Program on Environmental Sciences, and the second is the International Program on Japan and East Asia. No Japanese language knowledge is required to join PEAK, and we actually include Japanese language classes within the courses. The structure of the curriculum is in some ways similar to some uh, universities uh, around the world and in some ways different. The first two years of the curriculum are referred to as the junior division, and this is a purely liberal arts curriculum. Uh, it does have some differences between the environmental sciences in Japan and East Asia, but more or less, the first two years are made uh, to give you a broad education so that you can be a well-informed citizen, and also to set you up for the third and fourth years, which are the specialization years. These are considered the senior division. Uh, this is where you, you sort of take part in your major. In environmental sciences, uh, this includes uh, six pillars of environmental science, including environmental principles, material science, management and policy, energy and resources, measurement and evaluation, and health and security. And in Japan and East Asia, it includes cultural studies, social and natural sciences, area studies, history, economics and politics, and international relations. Now, in terms of uh, fees and scholarships, so let's go into detail in this. So these are the living costs that peak students generally pay. Uh, this is showing you as of 2024, uh, reflecting uh, the current exchange rate of about 160 yen to a US dollar. The admission fee is about $1,763. It's a one-time fee. And then there's a tuition fee, which uh, per year right now is $3,349. If you live on campus, the accommodation is uh, $519 per month. That includes all bills. And the typical living expenses in addition to this, so for example, for food and the such are about $500 per month. We have scholarships um, that some of our uh, peak students are able to get. Um, these scholarships are offered automatically um, based on the results of the peak admissions process. So there is no separate application that is required. First, we have the University of Tokyo Scholarship. This is for a specific number per year. In some years, it's 10, but this is this might vary from year to year. And it covers the admission fee, all tuition fees, and 126,000 yen uh, per month stipend. We also have access uh, to the Japanese government next uh, scholarship, which is there are about five of those per year. That includes the round trip airline ticket to Tokyo, the admission fee, all tuition fees, and about 120,000 yen per month. And in addition to that, we, we often have country-specific scholarships, which currently includes uh, the Singaporean Nationals Scholarship, Jugas, the Malaysian Nationals Scholarship from Jagan, and the Scholarship of Vietnamese Students Studying in Japan by the Fast Retailing Foundation. So how do you apply to PEAK? Uh, so first of all, it's important to determine whether or not you're eligible. So in order to be eligible for PEAK, you generally need 12 school years of pre-university education. Uh, of these 12 years, there are two conditions that have to be met. Uh, first, at least nine of those school years have to be taught primarily in languages other than Japanese. So primarily. And the second condition is that in the second six years of that 12 years of pre-university education, at least five of those school years have to be taught in languages other than Japanese. So assuming that you are eligible, um, then we require some standardized examinations and we take actually a, a broad listing of, of possible standardized examinations uh, to try to be as broadly available to as many people around the world as possible. Some of the, uh, the more commonly taken standardized examinations that we accept are the International Baccalaureate, uh, A-levels and international A-levels, the European Baccalaureate, Cambridge Pre-U, the SAT, and the ACT. In addition to this, we accept a number of national qualifications from different countries around the world. And if you're interested in seeing the specific uh, national qualifications and the full list of standardized exams that we take, I encourage you to please uh, take a look at this QR code and go to the link that it sends you, and you can see an appendix on the full list. If uh, So once you take the standardized examinations, we require that you fill out an online application form. Uh, included in this would be an essay. Uh, the topic for the essay changes from year to year. 
and it should be directly inputted into the online application form. In addition to that, we require official school transcripts, a certificate of graduation or of expected graduation if you're in school, uh, official examination results for academic ability. So these are your standardized examinations. Official test scores for English proficiency if English is not your native language and you have not been educated primarily in English. And in addition to this, two evaluations, uh, particularly from your high school teachers. So once you send in your application, the first stage of the process at our end is a document screening. We decide on which students are uh, going to be our target students for the second stage. This, the second stage students, the ones who are invited into that, uh, conduct a personal online interview. Plus, in the case of the environmental sciences, uh, con they uh, conduct a math test, an online math test. And successful applicants are offered places based on the results of these stages. Now, bear in mind that the application period this year for entry in September of 2025 is from the 12th of November until the 10th of December, 2024. This is a strict period, so we do not accept applications outside of this. So what happens with peak graduates? So here is, in general, uh, what happens with our peak graduates. So, so at, at, towards the end of their, uh, of their time, as they, as they enter um, the workforce, um, some of them are basically studying trying to get into graduate school, and some of them are going to business, typically. Uh, you can see that roughly 48% of our graduates go on to graduate school, and roughly 46 go directly into employment. So those are the two dominant paths that people take. In graduate school, they go all over the world uh, for, for their uh, graduate degrees. And in terms of employment, uh, most of them do stay in Japan and work for large corporations, although about 13% of them go abroad. In case of um, this the students that don't go directly into employment or into graduate school, um, you can you can see that a number of them essentially study for further for a, a further amount of time based on their uh, on their interests. Some of them conduct a longer period of job hunting. Uh, others prepare to work in some other way, and some of them are actually essentially work as as unpaid researchers in an internship capacity in order to build some experience for further graduate school experience or or employment experience. In terms of peak graduates who go on to graduate school, you can see kind of a list of, of some of the, the institutions that they go to, and it's, it's a list of essentially elite universities around the world, including places like uh, Columbia University, Duke, Yale, uh, some of course stay on at the University of Tokyo, uh, Harvard, uh, Keio, Korea University, ETH Zurich, um, Oxford, Cambridge, so forth. So. Uh, we're very successful in terms of our placement into the world's top graduate schools. Their study subjects are actually fairly broad. You might think that given that uh, there are two major programs, environmental science and Japan and East Asia, that uh, the, there would be a narrow listing of um, graduate school departments, but it's actually quite broad. On the environmental sciences side, they include biomedical engineering, computer science, economics, education, environmental policy, law, management, mathematical sciences, urban community and regional planning. And on the Japan and East Asia side, which is more focused on social science and humanities, you have things like area studies, uh, economics, gender studies, global studies, uh, international relations, Japanese history, uh, law and philosophy and sociology. The students that go on directly into employment actually enter a variety of different sorts of companies uh, and work in a variety of different roles. Uh, a lot of them do, probably the biggest part, go directly into business and, and business management. Um, some also go into accountancy, banking, and finance. Uh, a good number go into education or media communication. And then there's a long list of, of smaller um, niches, including leisure, sports, tourism, information technology, retail, trade, and wholesale, construction, public service, and administration, and so forth. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you gained uh, a nice perspective on the University of Tokyo and of the PEAK program. And if you have further questions, first of all, please visit this website and take a look at the QR code. And from there, you can see tons more information and also see how to reach us. Thank you very much.